Now I'll read from the Bible. Today's passage is Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Once again, Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be able to gather again today to worship you. Thank you for this grace you bestowed upon us to be able to worship you. Lord, we know that we would not be able to gather here without you, and that is because of you, Lord, that we have received your grace and have this opportunity to do so today. Today, Lord, we have the opportunity to learn more about Jesus from Pastor Joey and to hear a new message from you. Ask, we ask, Lord, that our hearts be softened to be able to hear your word and to be able to hear it to the extent that we can possibly under, understand. We have great expectations. Pray in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, everyone. It's, if you would like to take off your mask, you are welcome to do so as you listen to the message this morning. Today, we're going to be looking at a word from God from the passage it was read just a moment ago. So sometimes we, we look at children and hear what they're saying. It just like really startles us. For example, in WBC, they're uh, having uh, Japanese teams really doing the best they can for the baseball. And there was, uh, we may recall Ichiro, who is a baseball player. And every year in Japan, when he has his season is off, he comes to uh, tell to work with children. And when he comes to greet, it, there was one time when he greeted the children by saying the following. He said, well, I come here every year and I always sense the same thing. I always am just impressed with how like sparkling your eyes are. I'm really excited about that. As you grow older, sometimes people's eyes start to go from shining to glaring. <laughs> and that's actually the same for me. When I'm playing baseball, I want to just have shining eyes when I play, but Sometimes it's difficult for me to do so. And when it's difficult for me, I remember your eyes and uh, do the best I can. In other words, for Ichiro, when he was he had the opportunity to interact with children, he was able to remember things that he had forgotten when he was a child. As for ourselves, we too can be startled or uh, reminded of various things by children. My friend, actually, uh, one of my friends has become a, f a father himself now, and he has a difficult time sometimes being a father, and he just takes, ter takes it out on himself. And so I was talking to him once, and uh, well, there was one time when he was asking his, I was asking his son, how old are you? And he, and he said, five. And I said, how old is your dad? And he said, five. And he's like, well, that can't be right, because how would your dad be five? He should be older than you. But like, the child responded by saying, no, 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 my dad became a dad when I was, when I was born, so he's five too. And <laughs> when his dad heard what he had said, he was actually 
um, took that as encouragement because he realized that as a father, he only was five years old himself. And so that he could actually um, not take things so hard on himself when he didn't feel he was being an appropriate father. So in this way, we can really be encouraged by children. In today's passage as well, we're looking at an interaction between Jesus and the disciples and involving children. Let's look a little bit at the background first. In verse 13, it says, People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. So children were being brought to Jesus here. And the people bringing them were likely the children's parents. In those days in Israel, according to Jewish customs, when it was a child's birthday, the parent would usually take it to a rabbi, take their children to a rabbi for a prayer. And so that's likely what was going on here, where children were being brought to Jesus for the purpose of being prayed over. And how is it that the disciples reacted, though? In verse 13, in the second part, it says, but the disciples rebuked them. So why is it the disciples would do such a thing? Well, it's likely that they weren't trying to just be mean to the children. They just realized that Jesus had to redirect a lot of people, and likely he was pretty tired and he didn't have time to just spend more time with little kids. In those days in the Jewish society, children were actually seen as having a low place in society and given very little priority. However, for the disciples, Jesus responded by saying, and, and his response was actually indignant, it says, He was, and in the Bible, there aren't many instances when Jesus gets upset about something. And so you can see by this just how much Jesus really loved the children. He says, and Jesus says in verse 14 and 15, very important things. He says, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So what does it mean to accept the kingdom of God like a child? And what does that faith look like? Let's, we're going to think about that today under the title of Childlike Faith with three points. Let's look at the first point. Genuinely accepted faith. God has, has given us a great present, and that is that of salvation through the cross, through Jesus' life. And at the end of his life, he died giving his life for our sin upon the, tr on the cross. On the third day, he rose and completed the present of salvation for us. That salvation is complete and is standing before us as a gift from God. What is, ex what is necessary for us is to just receive this present with the thanks and gra gratefulness. If you put an uh, exciting present in front of a child and you say, I'll give it to you, what do the kids do? What would a kid child do in a response? They'd say, thanks, and they just take it, right? However, if you do the same thing for an adult, some adults may not just grab it and say thanks. They would... Uh, be considering exactly what it is that was in the heart of the person who was trying to give them something and wondering exactly what it would be, what their intent was for giving it to them and what how would things would be if they accepted it and so on. And that same kind of response is something that some adults have towards salvation as well. In this world, there is the kind of skeptical outlook on things that are given out for free and some people may have actually suffered because of this. It is true that sometimes when people are saying, this is free, I'll give it to you, it is wise to be cautious. As for myself, when I was a student, the following happened. It was actually my friend. And at the new um, and the entrance ceremony, there was an opportunity to fill out a survey for this club he was interested in. And one of the um, the the questions on the questionnaire actually was the answer was sent to this other company totally unrelated with personal inf information and it, they it was given information saying you can have this free english lesson trial and went into this room for this 
English <laughs> lesson uh, place and was told for a lot of time about how wonderful it was. And there was this like really expensive contract set before him. And thankfully he didn't um, sign it and put his stamp on it because otherwise he would have had to pay a lot of money. He was uh, in a sense just, uh, just at a loss because he had just obeyed what this young woman was telling him <laughs> had told him earlier. However, he finally was able to manage leaving the place without stamping his stamp on there. So I really do encourage college students to be careful. But in the world, there are a lot of things that are offered for free. Few, uh, and a lot of them are offered free at first, but then you're required to pay money afterward. And that's the same for the internet as well. Sometimes they allow you to see something just a little bit for free, but then up to a certain point, starting a certain point, you have to start paying money for the same service. As for adults, in the lives that they live, you've likely experienced such things as this. And you may have experienced something very pleasantly at first, but then afterward get charged with something and then all of a sudden it isn't so great anymore. In some ways, people are told about the gospel and how it, it, salvation is free and so on, and they may have the same response to it. It is true that amongst relationships between people, there are some things where you do need to be very careful about uh, how you would interact with them and what you believe, what they say. However, the relationship with God is completely different. As we have a relationship with God, there's nothing we need to be worried about or fearful of. The reason why is that God has gives us things and gives us his love unconditionally, and he is a good father. In Matthew chapter 7, verses through 9 through 11, it says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a sake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So, God has given us the present of salvation, and the reason why is that Jesus has given his life for us, and that is the only way there is to salvation. Many parents want to protect their children, and they're even willing to do so to the extent of giving their own lives. You may have heard of a uh, uh, Looks um, in Koki Suzuki's family, a, a, a girl was born a few months ago, and I asked him if he would give his life for his girl, if if his daughter, if needed, and and he immediately <laughs> immediately said yes, and it was just real quick, and that you can see in this way how a, a parent's love is expressed toward their child. In the 1900s. There was a famous Christian poet by the name of Jukichi Yagi. At the age of uh, 29, he actually died. Amongst his works, though, he wrote a letter toward his, for his daughter, Momoko. Let me read it just briefly. Oh, Momoko, when you can't help but fuss, I will give you a fist. <laughs> this is something that would only happen in the Taisho period, not today, obviously. <laughs> And then he says, but Momoko, if you ever need my life, I would give it to you any time. You can really see how he was expressing the love of his uh, father rule at that time. The love that Jesus expresses is the same. And he actually did give his life to protect us, to save us from our sin. To give one's life is an expression of love, is the truth of what Jesus has done for us. And that is why we can completely trust him. Jesus has given his life and completed the work of salvation. And in that way, if we can have childlike faith, we can accept it. Let's look at the second point today. Genuinely desiring to have faith.
to what extent is it that God really wants to hear our voices and hear from us? You may wonder at times. Well, it's kind of similar to that of a parent. A parent would do anything to just hear the voice of their child. In many instances, the parents remember clearly what it is the first word their child said. I do too. My oldest、uh, son said flower. <laughs> my younger son said, said, go for it. <laughs> And my <laughs> and my youngest,、uh, my da- my daughter、um, hasn't spoken yet, but I'm I'm pretty sure she's going to say I love you, Dad. That's going to be her first word. So, any in this way, parents really do like to hear what their children have to say, and God is the same with us. God desires to hear our de- our、uh, requests and hear our prayers. In certain circumstances in our Christian life, the longer it becomes, sometimes we may stop to、uh, pray p-、uh, in personally for ourselves. We just feel that well, it's being selfish to only think about myself, and that we should just leave everything up to God. And maybe we stop praying for ourselves, and we think may think that that actually shows we're a mature Christian. However, there's a famous Uh, prayer, a、uh, person of prayer who、uh, prayed daily over a period of thirty years, saying that、uh, he prayed nothing for himself for that period of time. And sometimes it may seem nice to want to look up to、uh, that that type of prayer. However, as a person of、uh, in the faith, it is important to consider. Really, we consider if that's actually being a good a good idea or not. In the Bible, there are a lot of good examples of people praying personal prayers, saying, "God, give me a child. Give me oil for cooking. Give me victory." And in this way, we can learn from these people. We can learn from these people, and we can remember that. God really does want to hear from us, just as a, a parent would want to hear from their child. In the information we have posted on the wall, there are various、uh, instances of testimonies、uh, given by people, and there was one、uh, testimony given at the women's group, which has really impressed me. And there's a lot of things you can learn from hearing people's testimonies. And in addition to you know big prayers, there are a lot of testimonies of instances where small prayers have been、uh, answered. Like I lost my glasses and I prayed, prayed and I found it, and I lost my wallet and then I found somebody had turned it in, and that my back was hurting. And I prayed and my back was healed and and so on. And you can see that these are all personal prayers. And you can see that even God is willing to answer such things as that. When I listen to some of these、uh, testimonies given at the women's、uh, group, I can really see just how trustworthy God truly is. In verse sixteen of today's passage, it says, "And he took the children into his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them." We are cho- Jesus' children, and we can always look up to Him as a father, and we can tell Him everything honestly. We know that God wants to hear even our smallest desires. Let's look at the final point today: pure faith that attracts others. In the third service. Uh, we have the COC children's service also held simultaneously upstairs, and when I interact with children, I can really just learn a lot from their pure faith and innocence. They really look to Jesus in a very direct manner, and, and it's very interesting. In the same way, if we adults were very open with Jesus and were able to walk in faith, it's likely the impact would really impact a lot of people. A long time ago, there was a person by the name of Domenico Ferri. He was a famous painter, 
And there was one time where he was requested to paint a painting for the church of the cross and Jesus dying on the cross. He wasn't a Christian, but he accepted the, the, word, the job and painted it. And as he was painting it, he was uh, also painting something he wanted to paint at the same time on a different uh, canvas. And so it was one of us, uh, of a dancing girl. And so he went out to the city to find a uh, person who could be the model for it. And so the girl came to model, be a model for the dancing the painting she, he was drawing. And so he had this you know, painting of the cross sitting in the same room as he was painting her. And she was really interested in the cross painting. And she asked the painter, she said, well, who is it, this person who is undergoing such pain on the cross? Did, she, did he really do something that bad? And he responded by saying, oh, well, that, you know, that's just a, something for church. It's Jesus Christ, you know. And uh, he actually like, took all of humanity's sin upon him on the cross, and, and he just died on the cross. <laughs> but, you know, of course, the painter didn't, you know, have faith in Christ, so he just kind of explained it and didn't think anything of it. However, this really impacted the, the young girl. And she asked again, well, you just said he died for everybody's sin, so that includes me, right? And he's like, well, yeah, that's all people. That'd be, that'd be you too. Yep, yep. And then the girl said, well, oh my gosh, she was just really impressed. And then when his, the work ended, the girl went to the church and spoke with the pastor, and she actually came to faith in Christ. Then... When he, she came back to the painter's uh, office, she explained that she believed in Jesus, and he, she was just filled with joy. And she said, you believe in Christ too, right? And he's like, oh, no, no, not me. And then the girl started crying and just calling out to him. She said, why? Why? You know that Jesus died for everybody's sin. You told me that. And if that's the case, then he died for your sin as well. That's why he died on the cross, right? And is it, how can you like not respond to that? And Fetty all of a sudden was just really struck by what she had to say. And he realized that he could explain what Jesus had done, but he hadn't really thought about the impact and the, how it really had to deal with him. So through her pure faith, he was really impressed. And he started to look at the, the cross and and became a Christian in the process. When Fetty finished the cross in the very bottom of the painting, he wrote the following. This is what I have done for you. What will you do for me? And this is in response to what Jesus had done. And this painting actually has been seen by many people now. And in response to Jesus, uh, Jesus, what Jesus has done for us, there's many people who have reached out to him and professed faith in him. Fetty was impressed by the pure faith of a little girl. And he himself accepted Christ in light of this. As for ourselves, when we have the opportunity to be a testimony to others, sometimes we... Uh, worries too much about making mistakes. However, what the mo greatest testimony of us will be is to just having pure, simple faith and showing that to others. And in that way, it will greatly impact those around us. Today, we looked at the topic of childlike faith. Jesus' salvation on the cross is complete and is given to us as a present. If anyone who has not accepted it yet, I encourage you to have childlike faith and accept it. And when, as children look up to their parents, we realize and remember that we can look to God in the same way for our needs. And when we have pure faith, we can walk forward in, his, in trust with him. And in this way, likely, we can have an impact on many people. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to worship you this morning. 
Today we've seen in the passage how Jesus said that you have to accept the kingdom of God as a child and that Jesus' salvation is given to us in the form of a present. If there is anyone who has not accepted it yet, I encourage them to have childlike faith and accept it with gratitude. In addition, just as a child, we want to come before you, God, and to have our uh, prayers and concerns brought before you. We know, Lord, that there's not anything that you would never want to hear from us. So, Lord, we also remember that it is your desire to answer our prayers. Lord, we really do trust in you and want to continue to have childlike faith as we work forward with you. In the various places you have us, Lord, please use us for your purposes. We thank you for this opportunity. Pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.